Praise the Lord. God bless you. This technology sometimes can be very irritating. And tonight, for some strange reason, my other account, it keeps kicking me out of the video streaming. I don't know if it's because I was playing some instrumental music earlier and it blocked it or something, but nevertheless, we're going to continue with the word of God tonight because the devil is a lie. He's not going to stop this word what God has given me to share from the Bible class tonight. I want to also uh, thank you all for your prayers. I had a, a great time in ten Tennessee this past weekend. God is uh, so good. His mercy endures forever. I want to encourage you. Don't allow the enemy to stop you from doing what God called you to do. I know sometimes things become frustrating, becomes um, difficult and challenging, but God is on your side. He is faithful. He is sovereign. He is holy. And we have to continue to make our allegiance to the Lord God, regardless of the situations that arise in our lives. Sometimes the enemy comes along to try to distract you and distort you from your purpose and the plan God has for your life. But you have to make up in your own mindset, no matter what comes your way, you're going to stand regardless with the word of God as, as the leader and the guy in your life to keep moving forward. What God has promised to do in your life to manifest himself in you. Good evening, Webster. God bless you. Uh, Prophet Young, God bless you tonight. So we're going to have a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God. In spite of the technical difficulty, Lord God, there is another avenue to declare your word tonight, Father. I thank you for your presence dwelling in our midst on tonight, O oh God. I pray that you make my tongue the pen of the ready writer and the heart the tablets of stone and gray with the word to speak by the unction of the Holy Spirit. This word that you have given me to teach tonight, O oh God that it will help inspire, edify, and build up your people, God, to give them the strength to keep moving forward in your word, Father God. No matter what challenges come their way, they put on the full arm of God to stand against the wiles of the devil. Father, remove the business of the day from our minds and our hearts that we have a clear conscience and focus to hear from you a divine word that will help change our minds and our hearts and our lives, oh God. And we thank you. For every participant, even those who may hear this video after tonight, oh God, that will help bring a change in their lives as well, Father, and bring conviction to all of our hearts to want to live right. If we're living in sin in any kind of way, God, forgive us, God. Cleanse our hearts, oh God, tonight. Let nothing hinder us from receiving this word, Father, God, will help nurture and, and spiritually enrich our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Our lesson is really, uh, it's really an in in inspiring lesson tonight because it's um, dealing with false prophets. Last week we were talking um, with different things concerning the love of God. And how it's important to be clothed in the armor of God every day of your life. No matter what you encounter in your life, you have to put on your garment. Put on your warfare clothes every day. You know, as I was uh, preparing for the lesson this evening, I was in a place of prayer. And I, and I just rested in God's presence on my face and said, Lord, just feel me. Lord, I, nothing else. I don't want nothing else. I don't want no other person. I just want you, God, to fill my heart. And I felt the presence of God. There's been a fire burning in my spirit. And, and I tell you, when God begins to speak to us, the enemy comes along to try to distract you, distort, and pervert the, the plan God has for you to stop you from walking in your purpose, to make you get blinded from truth because of, of his negative influences. And that's what the devil wants to do is stop you from moving forward in what God has for you. You have to keep standing on the word of God. You got to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, uh, LaShonda, can you send a message to your Aunt Deborah? She's trying to call me at the moment. I can't answer the call. Um, I'm teaching a class at this time. So send her a message, please. Um, one thing about the enemy, he, he's going to allow people to come into our lives in your circle who's going to appear to be a child of God, a, 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 clo a wolf clothes and sheep clothing. 
looking like God, but all the time it's a wolf. And that wolf is looking for someone who's vulnerable in the body of Christ, who's not prayed up, who's not consecrated, who's not spending time in the word, who's allowing himself to be distracted by the things of the world. And God wants you to be aware that's a false prophet. False prophets have many different agents that are seeking in different places, looking for a vulnerable person. And you have to be on your P's and Q's when it comes to the enemy. You can't be pity patting with the devil, walking with Christ today, and then later on today, you're walking in darkness. The Holy Spirit, he loves us so much, he'll convict you. God bless you, Cousin Angie. He'll convict you to live right even when you don't want to live right. Because the flesh desires, we all know, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are the very tools and avenues the enemy uses to demise your character. He knows your character is formed in the image of Jesus Christ. So what he does, he allow people that you are familiar with who is not walking with God. Last week we had on our radio program here in Milwaukee, is it good for Christians to be friends with unbelievers? And one of the, the finality of answers we came to the conclusion of is that it's okay to have a friend with an unbeliever as long as they're not pulling you from who you are in Christ. And you're able to minister to them the gospel. You're not, not to be ashamed of the gospel, not to be ashamed of your testimony, what God has done in your life to set you free when you were bound, when you were sick, when you were afflicted, when you were wounded, you were torn, you were broken, you were, you were cast out. All the different things that happens to us to make us feel worthless and feel inadequate of God's love, God doesn't want us to allow an unbeliever to come into your life to pull the life out of you. And that's what the enemy does. He send wolves to look like sheep to befriend you. And when they befriend you, they're looking for a little foothold to get into your heart to tear you down. And a lot of people I found out, they hang around you when they know you're blessed. They hang around you when you're always doing stuff, good things for them. They hang around you when you got money, you keep giving it out, dishing here, dishing there to different people. So they're looking for a moment in your life to find you weak. And when they find that one little weak spot in your heart, that's when the enemy comes in full force to cause you to start doubting your faith in God. You have to be careful and not allow the enemy to deceive you or manipulate you to follow after the desires of the flesh. Because the flesh, the word says, is prone to de do evil. The flesh, it does not submit to God, neither can it submit to God. So what we have to do, as Paul tells us in the word of God, to, to buffet our flesh daily. That means beat this flesh under subjection with the word of God. The more I feed my mind with the word of God, the more I devour the word of God, the word of God gets in my spirit. So when my mind tells me, okay, let's go ahead and slip off and do a little fornication, go and do adulteration, go and get you some alcohol, go and get some cocaine, go and shoot the needle, go, go to the club, go and drink some alcohol. When the flesh tells you to do things that the Holy Spirit said, don't do that. A little leaven, leaven the whole lump. A little bit of foothold of a lot of enemy coming in your life is going to mess you up. But instead of us listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we listen to the gratification of the flesh that's desiring the thing to appease itself that turns you away from God. And God wants us to know tonight that offended people will be offended of the word of God. Jesus said it's impossible that offenses should not come. <clears throat> As a child of God, we're going to be offended by something in this life, but when you become offended, you have to be quick to agree with your adversary as the word tells us and not allow the offense to settle in your heart to get you out of your place in Christ. Glory to God in the highest. So tonight we want to talk about false prophets. False prophets. Jesus called false prophets wolves and sheep clothing matthew chapter 7 verse 15. and matthew chapter 7 verse 15 it says beware of false prophets which comes to you in sheep clothing but inwardly they are raveling raveling wolves 
They, they're looking to devour you. They're plotting and planning to destroy you. Then he says in verse 16, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or of fig thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. This is verse 17. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Then he goes on in verse 19. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. So if you've got someone coming to you in your life appearing to be a child of God, but and you know in your heart the Holy Spirit said you need to get away from that person, and you don't, and you allow yourself to get consumed in their, their conversations, you allow yourself to get caught up in their schemes and their demise, their traps and trickeries and their connies, you need to be careful. Because the enemy is, uh, is right around the corner using that individual to get you blindsided from who you are in Christ Jesus. You have to know the spirit of living God. You got to know what God has called you to do in your life and not allow the enemy to stop you from being what God wants you to be. And that's what the enemy wants to do in your life is knock you down to where you can't see yourself walking in truth and righteousness. You got to get to the place in yourself. You recognize what God is doing in you and allow the spirit of God to draw you to the wells of water to drink from the word of God. When you drink from the word, he says, you drink from this well and never thirst again. He said, the water that I give you, like he told the woman at the Samaritan woman at the well, he says, he said, give me a drink. She said, you being a Jew, I've been a Samaritan. You know, we don't have no dealing with each other. Pretty much what she was saying. And he said, but if you knew who it was to ask you for a drink, he would give you eternal water. And you'll never thirst again from this well. So we got to know the, the, the fruit that people call themselves barren. If the, the fruit of a person's life does not line up with the word of God, you need to stay away from them. You need to cut yourself off. Don't mingle with them because they're going to destroy you. And that's the plot and the plan of the enemy to stop you in your tracks. So you got to get in your word. You got to know the word of God for yourself. They are self-seeking men who give the appearance of being Christians. Sheep clothing. They are self-seeking men and women and children who give the appearance of being Christians. Sheep's clothing but have, have the inward nature of a wolf. You ever watch television? A wolf don't travel alone. You know, watch the Nature Channel. You'll find out anytime there's one wolf, there's some other ones around, the, around somewhere waiting on him to find the prey, and he's seeking for them to come, and they all come and pounce on that prey to destroy it. You have to be very, very careful as a child of God who you entertain because many have entertained wolves unaware. Some have entertained angels unaware. But we have to be on guard by the spirit of the living God and allow the word of God to draw our attention. Because the more I have an ear to hear what the spirit says to the church, guess what? I'm on guard. I'm on guard against the wiles of the devil because that's the word tells me. Wolves like to hang around sheep. They can be found in the congregation. Check this out. Wolves like to hang around sheep, right? They can be found in the congregation and in the pulpit. You can have some preachers, some prophets coming to the house of God who are wolves appearing to look like a sheep. And all the time they're spitting out poison, false doctrine, a word that sounds good, that tickles your itching ears. <coughs> In 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. 
So, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days, right? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But mark this. In other words, write this down. Pay attention to this. There will be terrible times in the last days. How many of you can attest tonight that we're living in terrible times? We're living in perilous times. We're living in wicked times. We're living in a pandemic world. Every year is a new virus. Why? Because we're living in terrible times. And God is saying, be aware of the terrible times. But check this out. Verse 2. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy. Verse 3. Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Verse 5, having a form of godliness. Having a form. In other words, they sheep, looking like sheep. Looking like they're godly. Looking like they're holy. Looking like they're serving God. But he says they have the form. See, there's a lot of people that look like they got it going on, and they broke. We got folk that wear all this fancy jewelry, put on the fancy clothing, and all the time they're broken in their hearts, they're bankrupt in their finances, their house is raggedy, full of garbage and filth, the children are messed up, the whole life is in confusion. But I look like I have the form of godliness. But all the time within my heart, I'm miserable. I'm sad. I'm bitter. I'm angry because my life is in shambles and I'm a wreck. And God is saying tonight, beware of those wolves in sheep clothing that look like the form of godliness. He says, but denying its power, denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. You can go to the store somebody and they're a kleptomaniac and you know they're a kleptomaniac and you hang around them. My mother used to say all the time I was growing up, she said, corrupt communication, corrupt good manners. And you know what that means? If I listen to garbage, I'm going to have garbage come in. <coughs> Excuse me. Not only am I have the garbage come in, but the garbage going to come out of me. Why? Because I hung around garbage. And if you hang around garbage, what's going to happen to you? I remember when I was, uh, I was about 20 years old, and I worked for the city of Gary, a sanitation worker. I wore coveralls every day. I was a garbage collector. So many different neighborhoods, emptying the trash cans in different people's homes, right? So in their backyards or in front of their house, they had their garbage can full of their garbage. And I would empty all this stuff. And by the end of the day, I smelled like garbage. Why? Because I hung around garbage all day. I'm going to with this. You hang around people who you know are wolves and sheep clothing and smell like garbage. Guess what's going to happen? The smell going to get on you. You be gonna become guilty by association. You may have nothing to do with the person what they do, but because you hung around them so much, the stench of their sin attached itself to your life. And God is saying tonight, beware of the wolves and sheep clothing who look like God, who don't have nothing to do with them. And that's one thing I found out. We grew up with people. They became our friends over the years. And we know their lives is messed up. So we end up finding ourselves constantly being connected to them and they negative. They got a potty mouth, always just spitting out poison. But because that's my friend, I can't let them go. But the Holy Spirit tells you your attitude is changing. Your character is changing. You're not looking the same. Ever since this individual came back into your life, you keep holding on to that person, 
Holy Spirit says something wrong with your life. Check yourself. And you hear the voice of God. You know it's the Holy Spirit convicting you. But because you hung around him for so long, you became weak in your faith. So whatever God tell you to do to let go and purge things out. God told Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25. He said, I was clean. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. He says, I will cleanse all your filthiness for all your idols. He says, then you'll be clean. The problem comes in. We want to keep bathing in the same dirty water. So the more I stay in that dirty water, I'm never cleansed from my idols. I'm never cleansed from my bad habits, my sinful behavior, the drug addiction, the alcoholism. I'm never cleansed from perversion, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, because I keep being dipping in the dirty water. And God says, in order to be clean, you got to allow him to be the one to wash you with the water of the word. When the water of the word washes you, it thoroughly cleans you. It takes away the gook and the junk that attaches itself to your life and it causes you to walk around with a debris all over you. God said, but when I cleanse you, you will be clean. Jesus told the disciples, he said, you are cleansed by the words which I've spoken to you. Ain't that something? He said, you are cleansed by the words that I spoke to you. That is so amazing. Just the word alone can cleanse you. And one thing about God, when God begins to speak to us and we don't listen, we put ourselves in danger. You allow yourself to be vulnerable to the enemy's tactics. Whatever he decides to do to you, he has the free right to do it because you gave him permission. Stop giving the enemy permission. Stop giving the enemy the power over your life. Take back your authority. We gave the enemy our authority. Every time I hear the word of God and I don't heed the word of God, I'm giving the enemy my authority to do just what he want to do in my life. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. So 25 and 26. This goes together. And then 27. Because I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove from you your heart of stone. We talked about this in previous lessons. Guard your heart for out of flow is your life, right? So the heart of stone is a heart that's not pliable. It's that heart that's not going to change. It's that heart that's not going to be, be convicted. It's, not, it's that heart that's not going to yield to the Spirit of God. So God says, I have to operate in you to take out the worldly heart and give you a heart of flesh, which is after his spirit. Then he says, and I will put my spirit within you and you will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So God says, in order for transformation to take place in your mind, we always talk about Romans 12 and 2 and be not conformed to this world, be transformed and new in our mind, prove the word of that good and suffer for the will of God, right? People can quote that night and day, or up, back, back with and forward. We can quote that one scripture, but we don't apply it to our life. So I'm just a sounding symbol of clanging gong. I'm just making noise because it sounds good. But God told Ezekiel, he said, I'm going to take out the heart of stone, give them a heart of flesh, he will put my, my new spirit within them. I remove from their heart the stone and give them a heart of flesh. So I put my spirit in you and they will follow my decrees. So after God operates, he says, when I give you the right heart, the heart that's going to be submissive, the heart that's going to be humble, the heart that's pliable to the Holy Spirit, we can pour into you the word of God to begin to feed you and nurture you, to build your muscles, to strengthen, encourage, and edify you. He said, that type of heart, is what I'm going to use to cause the children of Israel to follow my decrees because they were very rebellious. In today's time, a lot of church folk are very rebellious. They're stubborn. They're haughty. They're arrogant. They're bitter. 
They're angry. They're not going to listen to the voice of God, even if they're not dependent on it. They go to church out of formality. Jesus had a problem with that. He said, because you hold on to your traditions and nullify the word of God. So they make the word of God not effective because of tradition. So out of tradition, I go to church. Out of tradition, I sing in a choir. Out of tradition, I serve on the mother's board, usher board, deacon board, trustee board. I can do all those things out of tradition. But my heart is far from them. And God says tonight, beware of false prophets because you become a false prophet. When you're not lifting by the word of God that you confess with your mouth, you become a false prophet. Did you know that? You become a false prophet every time you call yourself prophesying something God says and it don't apply to you. But everybody else puts apply to them, but it don't fit me. So when I get out of church, I go home and beat up my wife, beat up my husband. I can go fornicate, don't you right? I'm going to go and live in a homosexual lifestyle. I'm going to do all this stuff because it don't apply to me. So whatever God says, I'm going to give it to everybody else. And one thing about it, I'm going to tell you this though. God says his gifts come without repentance. So if you choose to live a hypocritical life and God uses you to prophesy, he's still going to use you. But you got judgment coming upon yourself. Because you know the right thing to do and chooses not to do it. So you will be beaten with many stripes. But he that knoweth not to do right with a few stripes. Why? That's the mercy of God and the judgment of God. God is merciful to the just and the unjust. But also he's going to judge you according to the fruit of your doings. But then he goes on. So they are sent by the enemy to infiltrate and deceive. They, are, they must build and so they must be identified by their fruits and not by the teachings or their prophecies. Often the teaching can appear to sound whereas the fruit in their lives and ministries is not. So it can sound like I got fruit, but I don't have the ministry in my heart. It's not part of my life. A minister or a Christian is what he lives, not what he preaches. You need to write that down. That's a key point to write down in your, in your notes right now. A minister or a Christian is what he lives, not what he preaches. So I'm not going to say one thing and live another way. My life is going to be balanced out by the Holy Spirit with the Word of God. So my preaching, my ministry, the things I do, I'm going to live it because I'm connected in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So you need to write that down. A minister or a Christian is what he lives, not what he preaches. Wolves go away. Wolves always go after the wounded and young sheep, not the healthy and the strong ones. Wolves always go after the wounded and young sheep, not the healthy, strong ones. Because he know the healthy and the strong sheep affirming their belief in Christ Jesus, they're rooted and grounded in their faith, they're not easily swayed by any wind or doctrine or anything that sounds and look good. So these wolves will tell people what they want to hear and not what they need to hear. Like I just mentioned here, you have a form of godliness, but they're not the power. So I'm going to tell you what sounds good to, to tickle your itching ears. These people don't want sound doctrine. They want someone to tickle their ears. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three and four. This goes with five, five, uh, chapter three, verse one through five, and chapter four, verse three and four. So, but know this: in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, unforgiving, having a form of God, but denying its power, and from such turn away. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. Ain't that something? Turn away from the truth. Because you want something to make your flesh feel good. And that's what God is saying tonight. Pay attention. Wake up. Stop sitting on the sideline, letting life pass you by. Get back in the fight, pull up your bootstraps, 
get back to their work for the kingdom of God, spreading the gospel. Because we're all called to be able ministers of the gospel, and God's holding you accountable for the soul descent in your direction. You don't speak the word. Also add on that chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Notice they would have a form of godliness and or Christianity, but would deny its power. How will they deny its power? Check this out. They deny that Christianity can change them from being unforgiving to forgiving. They will boast of being followers of Jesus and proclaim their new birth experience, but what they boast of has not been allowed to pierce their hearts and bring forth the character of Christ. I'm going to read that again. because this, this is good. This is really good. See, they will boast of being followers of Jesus and proclaim their new birth experience. But what they boast has not been allowed to pierce their hearts and bring forth the character of Christ. See, that thing about the Word of God, when you allow the Word of God to get in your heart, it's going to pierce you when you're wrong, convict you when you're in error. It's going to cause you to fall on your face for God in repentance because the Word of God is promoting and producing the character of Jesus Christ in you, that the life you live, you live by the faith of the Son of God who gave his life for you, died on the cross for you, and rose you up from, raised you up from the dead through the resurrection power. So when you know that God is in your heart, doesn't matter what the enemy does, it's not going to silence your voice. It's going to keep on speaking the word. So you got to guard your ear gate, guard your heart, guard your mind, guard your eye gate, be careful what you speak, because all of these areas of our lives will produce some type of fruit to come out of you. So if I allow all this garbage and negativity to come into my life, that's all I'm going to reproduce. So you go to a factory, work in a factory, they manufacture different things of the same kind. The enemy does the same thing. He manufactures the sinful desires after the same kind to bring forth the same fruit in your life that cause you to walk in rebellion against God. He wants a hostile takeover to stop you from fulfilling and walking in your divine purpose that God has called upon your life. Information generation. Information generation. Paul could see prophetically that these deceived and women, men and women, will have a zeal for the knowledge but remain unchanged since they never applied it to their heart. There are so many people who are deceived, men and women of God. They have a zeal for knowledge, but they never change. They say, I love God, I worship God, I praise God, but there's no conviction. There's no surrenderance. There's no intimacy with God. And God is trying to provoke us tonight, provoke you to righteousness, provoke you to get in your word, to study the scriptures, to know how the scriptures ought to be applied to your heart. Allow the Zoe life of God to permeate your existing and the Ruah of God's wind to blow upon you with his breath, to blow in you, blow in you, to bring you to a place where you have no choice but saying, God, here I am to worship here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. Because the Ruah, it keeps your breath of life flowing. So anyone I come in contact with, like when Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to disciples in a locked room. And the scripture says he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. We need the wind of God, the Ruah, to breathe on us tonight that we can sense God's presence like never before. He goes on to say, he described them as always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's a sad predicament to be in your heart, where you're always learning, always studying, 
but it never been applied to your life because of rebellion, because of your pride heart, your stubbornness. You continue to feed your flesh and not God's spirit. That is a dangerous place because you're allowing the judgment of God to be prepared for you. And one day, when Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11, I believe it is, he said, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it save God? And God will render to every man according to the fruit of his doings. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Verse 9, 17, 9. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. So the heart is deceitful above all things. So it doesn't matter what else you do in life. It doesn't matter how many jobs you have, how much you work to earn all this money to live a satisfying life. He says here, the heart is very deceitful. You know why? Because if you ever come to learning you're always studying, but it never applied to your heart. So you find yourself stuck in a dark place with the absence of God. But God cannot reach your mind, he cannot reach your heart. But then he goes on and said, verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. So check this out. If God searched the heart, don't he know what, what you're going to do before you do it? Don't he know your ideas in your mind? What you're thinking about? What you're plotting and planning to do? When you wake up in the morning? What you're plotting and planning to do when you lie down? He knows your agenda. He knows your list of priorities. He knows everything about you, right? Because I search the heart and I examine. When you go to the doctor for a physical, what they do, they examine your physical body. They want to find out if there any type of defect in your body that needs to be cared for that requires an attention, immediate attention. So they examine you. God says, I search the heart. So he's looking inside of your heart to see what's in there that shouldn't be there. But then he goes on and says, not only am I examining your heart, but I, he said, I, I know your mind. I'm, I'm, I'm examining your mind. So whatever in your mind is not of me, I can reveal it to you to bring conviction and repent of a heart. Then he goes on to say to reward each person according to their conduct, your behavior, the life you live, the life you're planning and planning to live, everything you're doing to satisfy yourself. God said your conduct according to what their deeds deserve. So what punishment you deserve? He says, I search the heart, I examine the mind, and I'm going to give you what you deserve because of your conduct. Is your conduct lining up with the word of God? Is your conduct bringing you closer to God? Is your conduct giving you a holy boldness to declare the word of God, to be a witness for Jesus Christ? Or is your flesh in the way? preventing you from being a wise steward of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You need to take, take a moment, examine yourself, see what's going on in your heart. 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. And it says spirits with an S. That mean many spirits, whether they be, they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So there's a spirit of a false prophet and he's warning us, beloved, my love child, to pay attention. Don't submit to everything that sounds and look like God because it's not of God. It's not going to line up with the word of God. Every prophetic word that a person speaks is a rhema word that has already been confirmed through the word of God. And the word of God 
will give you a revelation. So when the prophetic word is spoken over your life, you know that word came from God. Because it's going to bear witness with your spirit. He said, because many false prophets have gone into the world. So you got to be aware of the wolves in sheep clothing who look like sheep. Then he goes on verse 2. 1 John chapter 4, verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. We can stop right there. Do you know the Spirit of God? Do you know what God is speaking to you? Do you know when God is warning your heart to come into his presence and worship him? Do you know when God is, is compelling you to come and bow down at his seat? Do you know the Spirit of God? Because he said the Spirit of God, the Comforter, whom the Father will send in my name, he said, guide you in all truth and bring back you to remember the thing wherewith I have taught you. No, he day, he said he will convict the world of sin. So do you know the Spirit of God? But then he goes on. He says, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come is the, in the flesh is of God. So all these spirits that you in, in, in encounter in your walk, he's saying these spirits, if they're confessing that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, the Son of God, that's of God. But if it's confessing that he's just a prophet, he's just a servant, he's not the son of God, that's not the spirit of God. That's why it's so important to study and show yourself approved of God. The workman need not to be ashamed, but rightly by the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2.15 Study your word, know your word. Beware of your word, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, seeking, searching for whom he may devour. But then he goes on and says, they deny that Christianity can change them from being unforgiving to forgiving. They will boast of being followers of Jesus and proclaim their new birth experience but what they boast of has not been allowed to pierce their hearts and bring forth the character of Christ. The information generation. If Paul were alive today, he would, he would be grieved to see what he foretold in operation, to see it manifested. He would see multitudes of men and women attending camp meetings, seminars, church services, amassing a, a knowledge of the scriptures. He will watch them hunt for new revelation in order to live more selfish and successful lives. He see ministers taking one another to court for righteous causes. He will see Christian publications and radio broadcasts attacking men and women of, the, of God by name. He will see charismatic run, running from church to church to escape offense. All of them professing the Lordship of Jesus while they cannot forgive. Paul would cry out, repent and be free from your deception. You are your self-seeking generation of hypocrites. And that's what God is saying tonight. Are you part of that generation who only serves God by name just to be called a child of God and your heart ain't in it? I remember one of our old artists R&B artist said, and I think it was Atlanta Star, said, if your heart ain't in it, why won't you tell me so? Because if your heart ain't in it, then you're in the wrong, on the wrong team. You need to go ahead and walk away from it. Allow yourself to continue to do what you're doing because you, you're destined for hell. But I come to tell you tonight that all that can change. It doesn't matter how, how up to date you are in new revelation from many seminars and Bible schools you attended, or how many books you read, or how many hours you prayed and studied. If you are offended in unforgiveness and refuse to repent of this sin, you have not come to the knowledge of the truth. If you are one of those people who knows the truth about God's word and you selfish, 
You continue to walk in darkness, continue to be rebellious, continue to be stubborn. You need to repent. But if you refuse to come to the knowledge of truth, you send yourself up for judgment. You are deceived and you are confused and you confuse others with your hypocritical, hypocritical lifestyle. No matter what the revelation, your fruit tells a different story. No matter what the revelation is, your fruit tells a different story. You'll become a spring spewing out bitter waters that will bring deception and not truth. So be careful. You deceive yourself by refusing to repent of your selfish ways. You have folk who selfish with their money. They selfish in helping people, but they always claim I need help, but I'm not willing to help nobody else. They always claim I need you to do this for me or do that for me, but I ain't giving them nothing. And the Holy Spirit is saying, be a giver. Be a lover of God, lover of men by your good deeds. Because in so doing, you fall out the pattern of Jesus Christ. And the more I serve, the greater I am in the kingdom. But if I'm tight and stingy and holding on everything I got, don't want to share with nobody else, go out to lunch with somebody else, I ain't paying for nothing. I ain't, I'm, I'm going to let them pay for the bill. I ain't going to give them no, I'm not going to get no indication that I'm going to help them, but I'm going to let them do it all the time. I go out with my pastor friend on radio every week. And I thank God for his loving heart. Because he's not worried about whether I pay or not pay. <coughs> the relationship that we established the last few years, if I have it to pay for the lunch, I pay for it. If I don't have it, I tell him I don't have any money today. But if you take care of it, I take care of it next time. And guess what happens? I take care of it next time. Why? Because I trusted God to provide for me to do that. He said, give, it will come back to you, good measures, Pressed down, shaking together, running over. Jump in, give it to your bosom. Why? Because that's the principle of the kingdom of God. If you're going to live in the kingdom of God, you can't be selfish. If you're going to live in the kingdom of God, you cannot be stingy. You have to let go of your selfish pride and allow the spirit of God to use you to be a giver to help somebody else along that journey. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's your daughter, your son, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your pastor, your church, doesn't matter who it is. Whoever God put in your spirit to be a giver to, you need to do it. Otherwise, you walk in false humility. You're living a deceptive life for yourself, and God ain't in it. So I've come to tell you tonight, if you're one of those who've been living as a false prophet, and you're being convicted tonight. I pray you get mad about it. Get mad enough to change your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and give you a new heart. Take out the stony heart, that false heart, that pretentious heart, and give you the heart of flesh after the Spirit of God. Then you put a new spirit in you to take over that old stubborn spirit and give you a spirit of humility. And I guarantee when you do that, you begin to bear fruit. I'll tell you one thing about this before we go. Every single time I trust God to give in the body of Christ or give to somebody and I don't have it, God I always provides. Because of my faith is not in what I need, is what he will provide, what he will supply for me. So I want you to know tonight, whatever God put in your heart, and wait till you sow your seed, sow your seed. If this Bible class has been a blessing to you, sow a seed. Don't be stingy. Don't be stubborn. If you feel God compelling you, it doesn't matter the amount. I had a young lady sow five dollars into the ministry because of her faith, because the lessons are helping her. I come to tell you, any seed sown to this ministry, it goes back into the ministry. And I'm trusting God that you will continue to allow God to allow me to feed you this word each week to help strengthen you, to sharpen iron, sharpen iron, to build your spiritual muscles with this word and change your life forever. It's a guarantee when you hear the word of God, 
He that has an ear, let him hear. Not only that, but be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Because so many people walk under the false prophet spirit who being hearers only and not doers. But you say you're, you're a Christian. You say you're a child of God. You say you're a prophet. You say you're a teacher. You say you're an evangelist. You say you're an apostle. You say you're a missionary. But your heart is far from me. He said, this people, they worship me with their lips, but their heart's not in it because they worship me from afar. Are you one of those tonight that God is talking to who've been living a pretentious life? You say you love God. You say you care about God, but your heart has drifted far from him. Come back tonight. God says he's married to the backslider. He'll heal your backsliding ways and restore you and clean you up and close you in himself. If you're on here tonight and you never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you've been in church for a very long time and never gave your heart to Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer after me tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I have sinned against you and against heaven. Come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, and be my Lord and Savior. And I ask Lord God to restore me, to revive me, to refresh me with the wind of your spirit, that I can feel your presence all over me like a blanket. And I thank you, Lord God, that I ask now, God, that you allow the anointing to fall fresh on me, that I would be bold enough to be a witness for you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer tonight. The Holy Spirit is moving on your heart. He's convicting and changing your life for eternity. I would hate to hear of anyone who lived for the body, lived in the body, for the Christ in the body of Christ and never was convicted, never changed their life, but kept living a sinful life behind closed doors. And then you die and you end up in hell. I come to tell you tonight that God loves you. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting, keep on going. It never ends. Keeps rolling, keeps rolling, keeps rolling. Keeps being dispersed. He said, by my loving kindness have I drawn thee. So I come to tell you tonight, if you've been convicted tonight, <clears throat> from the day four. Excuse me. From the day forward, purpose in your heart. You're going to try to live a better life for Jesus Christ. And allow the Spirit of God to change your life for eternity. So, Lord God, tonight I thank you for this word. As if this word will minister to the hearts of those who hear this word and change their lives for, for eternity. That you will be glorified in everything we do and everything we say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I have the pinned um, message. If you want to sow into the ministry, it's pinned on the bottom of the comment section. And I pray that God touch your heart to sow. Now see and trust God. He will restore to you a hundredfold blessing in return. That you would give God the glory and be the better benefit of it. In Jesus' name. Hey, man, anyone have any questions or comments? Put those likes and hearts on here. We'll see those likes. If you like this lesson in life and really touch your heart, put those hearts on here tonight. So let me know that, you, that it ministered to you. Because this is about Jesus, kingdom business. It's kingdom business. It's not about us. It's about God being glorified. Amen, amen, amen. Well, you all be blessed tonight. C continue to stay encouraged. Stay excited about Jesus. Know that God loves you. He cares about you. And the word says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I guarantee when you allow the word to go before you, not only will the word be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path, but the word will be your protection. The word will cover you and your children, your household. Matter of fact, I want you to do something. If you have any anointing oil in your house, I want you to take that oil 
and anoint your doorposts. Anoint your wind around the windows. Because what you're doing is an act of faith of setting a protection around your house where no evil spirit can come in. If there's any evil spirit in your house, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare because of the anointing, they're going to be driven out by the spirit of the living God. So I want you to walk in faith. Trust God when you anoint your doorpost that it's going to do what God said it's going to do. Be a covering and protection for you and your household. And that from this day forward, that you walk in the purpose that God has called you out of darkness to marvelous light for a purpose. Lord says the same. We will resume again next week at the seven o'clock hour. I mean, six o'clock hour. Correction, six o'clock hour for the Tuesday night Bible class. Tuesday night Bible class. T N B C. And I pray that you share this video with somebody else. If it has blessed you, share it. Let somebody else know that we was on live tonight, and it was a good word, good teaching that you heard tonight. And you believe it to help somebody else change their life. God bless you. You all have a great night. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and embody us henceforth now and forevermore. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And Lord, give you peace. Until next week, God bless you. Have a good night.